very good afternoon to all of you and uh, today uh, we gathered on the occasion in association with the tirthankar mahavir university and tirthankar mahavir dental college and institution innovation council jointly organizing virtual cd program on recent innovations in dental imaging so i welcome you all our uh, principal sir and all the head of, head of the departments and other delegates on this virtual cd program on recent innovations in dental imaging by dr arti choudhary dr arti choudhary is a good friend of mine more than two decades and uh, she is passed out uh, mds from kelly belgaum and karnataka and she is presently as a joint director and cbct consultant at sampurna 3d dental imaging and she is a clinical consultant department of oral oncology srj cbcc cancer hospital research center indore and uh, she is a very renowned speaker as well as she is the senior most academician in our in the uh, subject of oral uh, medicine and radiology and she is a very active member and we work together as a executive members uh, during our uh, tenure in our association so i welcome dr arthi choudhary for this and uh, sir i welcome our principal sir to say few words on this occasion change good, good afternoon good afternoon all of you so i would like to welcome dr arthi choudhary for this uh, wonderful uh, initiative of conducting this uh, webinar and i hope all the participants are uh, really going to benefit from the talks that you are going to go, uh, give on the innovative technologies and the techniques so i wish the same and uh, all the best to all the participants thank you thank you very much okay. thank you sir thank you for kind words sir and uh, i over to dr arthi choudhary to kindly can start the session vaibhav ji a very good afternoon yeah respected Dr. principal sir can you hear me everybody yes 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 we can hear you we can yeah, yeah we can hear you you can continue yeah yeah a very good afternoon to respected principal dr sunil and all my dear colleagues from the institute of Tirthankar Mahavir University at Moradabad. It's indeed a, a pleasure to be delivering a lecture online today. And at the same time, I also feel that we are so blessed that, in spite of not being in your institute today, we are still able to connect online. So a big thanks to the digital technology which has revolutionized the way um, we are able to perhaps deliver knowledge. at the same time we are also in a position to interact with each other although physically i am not present there so uh, today's session uh, is got a little to do with digital itself you know we are going to be talking on digital imaging today and uh, let me just share a little bit of um, my background with you all since we are going to be talking on a very important topic digital imaging is a revolution that has started almost about um, more than two decades ago and it began with it began with a very small initiative where a 2d technology which we were using for years together you know in the form of opg lateral cephalogram and multiple other ways in which conventional radiographs were used so we always had a feeling that the 2d technology always uh you know lacked the third dimension it never was able to give us the depth although we could see the pathology in its totality but still it lacked the depth perception we didn't know how much a pathology was actually deep okay so for that aspect we really missed the third dimension for a very very long time so 2d technology was something which we used for decades but yet lacked the third dimension and the basic drawbacks with 2d technology whether it was intraoral or extraoral imaging 
like you can see on your screen okay there were magnification errors there were you know there were technique sensitive even when we were processing the radiographs there was a problem during processing okay and very very uh, common problem that we faced is that very early lesions we fail to diagnose them on a radiograph because 30% of decalcification of the bone did not take place so with that aspect we really lacked a lot of uh, you know diagnostic value was lost on a 2d radiographs on multiple levels then came a time where there was a digital revolution a digital revolution which began in the early 2001 2002 you know years of uh, the decade where we saw that there was a gradual change in the aspect of digital technology everything was getting digitized you know whether it was our cell phones whether it was our computer systems whether it was the typewriters were getting digital into you know the the print out format that we are having today so there was a digital revolution which was having happening in every sector of various industries so why not the health industry and when it was the digital revolution were ct and mri which were coming the dental sector also saw a conventional radiograph being converted into digital technology so we were having something known as the rvg system which was invented more than two decades ago now and this gives us gave us a major benefit of showing the patient the images instantly on the screen all the aspect of processing you know errors of processing were eliminated using the rvg system with the rvg system getting more and more popularized the opg also started getting digital and at the same time we came across something known as the era of digital imaging okay so that was the 21st century where almost everything in the health industry was visualized or imaged using the 3d technology it began with the ct scan then of course it went on to the mri system then the pet the spect ct the mri and of course now even the digital x ray the dental x ray and the cbct so this was the advancement which we are seeing today the opg machine also instead of the conventional film it is now replaced with a digital sensor and the scan of just for 13 seconds gives us beautiful images of the patient so this is the beauty of the dental imaging system and that is the cbct so how is one imaged using the 3d technology you know how is one imaged using a 3d system so in the 3d technology we have the x ray source at one end and an array of sensors at the other end and this array of sensors moves around the patient it moves around the patient in a 360 degree rotation multiple times so you have multiple axial slices of the patient being taken in the same format instead of the array of sensors now we have something known as the flat panel detector so you see this is the technology which is used for ct scans and for cbct we use the flat panel detector and this flat panel detector receives the radiation in a conical beam so this conical beam it passes through the patient's area of interest and gets registered on the flat panel detector and this rotation also goes around the patient okay it goes around the patient in the 360 degrees format around either you take it in supine position or standing position but yet the principle of working remains the same so what you obtain is something known as the basis images because of multiple rotation of the x-ray source you get something known as the basis images and this basis image 
gets piled up on each other to give you a volume this volume carries the entire information of the head and neck of the patient okay so then comes the reconstruction okay there is an algorithm which which the reconstruction of the image takes place people i hope i am audible to everyone Yeah, yeah, you are audible. You are audible. I'm audible. Yeah. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay. Yes, kindly, continue. All right. So this is the algorithm with which, okay, the reconstruction takes place. There's no much information required um, at a general level. You just remember that this is, you know, the Feldkamp, Davis, and Kress is the is the algorithm with which reconstruction. So a digital information is converted into visual information using this algorithm then whenever the image is visible to us okay whenever the image is visible to us we get it in three planes one is the coronal plane the second one is the sagittal plane and the axial plane when you see the image in all the three planes there is absolutely no chances of you missing out on the minutest pathology present in the jaws of the patient okay so this is in correlation with the tooth so suppose you have scanned this particular region a small area which has been scanned so you can see it three dimensionally you can see it in the axial plane where you can see the pulp chambers the pulp canals rather very clearly okay all the pulp canals are very clearly visible to you then you can see the entire morphology of the pulp canal in the sagittal plane and the axial which will give you individual pulp canal information if you want to look at the mesial then you can have a look at the mesial pulp canals whether this is the buccal and this is the lingual so all this information is available to you on a single scan and the beauty of cbct lies in the fact that you can see it on a single monitor on the monitor you can see all the three planes simultaneously so you can visualize a structure three dimensionally and then reach to your diagnosis so unlike something known as a dental scan which was very very popular a couple of years ago where we took the image of the patient in the head and neck region on a ct scan machine and used a software known as a dental scan for a dental reconstruction but this but this technology didn't work for too long it was not popular for too long for multiple reasons one important reason is that it did not give you dimensional stability in the sense all the measurements that you made of the bone were not correct there was a magnification error of multiple millimeters on a dental scan and the patient was exposed to a lot of radiation similar to that of a ct scan so for head and neck why should you expose the patient to so much of radiation unnecessarily so that is the reason the dental scan technology was not too popular in the but it did not last for too long <laughs> these are the hello i think there is some disturbance i i i request delegates kindly mute them okay i think it has been done okay yeah all right so this is how compact the machine is today this is how compact it is it is somewhat something very similar to an opg machine with minute changes like you have the flat panel detector on one side and you have the x ray source on the other side and there is a volumetric scan which is made of the patient with a 360 degrees rotation of this x ray source and the sensor around the patient's head okay so the entire scan is just completed in about 14 seconds that's all unlike a ct scan where it takes couple of minutes the patient also gets a little claustrophobic because he has been put in a gantry and made to you know sleep in a supine position but this scan is just very very convenient to the patient within 14 seconds the entire scan is over 
then it reduces the physical foot space just look if anybody wants to have uh, you know or um, have seen a supine machine of a cbct it is much compact and much smaller one is a standing machine that you've just seen this is a scan done in a standing position and this is a scan which is done in a supine position and you see how compact this machine is as well so patient is placed in this gantry and this rotation which goes out around okay and its cost is just one fourth as that of a ct scan machine not just this look at this machine this is one which is a icat machine which you can make the patient sit and take a scan so multiple models which are available today for a cbct machine this is the standard machine even which we have in our center and you can have a cephalostat associated with it and you can see that it is a very small compact machine which comes in just about you know uh, say about uh, maybe 120 square feet place you can have the entire setup of not just the machine but including your console and everything your printer everything can be set up in a very small area then the biggest advantage lies in the fact that the radiation dose given to the patient is much much less unlike that of a ct mandible see here you are giving close to 13 to 100 micro sieverts to the patient which is equal to a full mouth iopa series okay a cbct of maxilla and mandible is similar to that of a full mouth iopa series of radiation unlike that of ct mandible or ct maxilla just see it is going in 1300 to 3000 micro so 1000 to 3000 micro sieverts for ct mandible and 1000 to 1400 micro sieverts for ct maxilla okay so here it is close to 1000 micro sieverts and here it is just about 13 to 100 micro sieverts so that is not even one fourth maybe less than one fourth amount of radiation which we are giving to the patient involving cbct then why did i say that the denta scan failed the denta scan for the ct scan machines you know why did that fail because it was not dimensionally stable but the beauty of cbct lies in the fact that it is dimensionally stable the basic unit okay the size of a voxel okay they are isotropic voxels unlike the ion isotropic voxels which is the basic unit for ct scan <laughs> so in conventional ct you will see that if the if the breadth and the depth are same the length is not matching so x is equal to y but it is not equal to z that is why it is called as an isotropic whereas in a cube okay you will see that x is equal to y is equal to z so it is dimensionally stable in all sides so that's why all measurements made on a cb ct are all dimensionally correct as compared to that made on a dental scan or images of a ct scan so you can rely upon any measurements that you make on a cbct like for implant planning or root canal length measurement okay the fracture site location so all that location you can well rely that you are doing the right measurements using the cbct so that's what it is making this technology even more popular today then another beauty of cbct lies in the fact that you can scan a small area to a large area depending upon your requirement you needn't expose the patient's full head and neck region to radiation suppose the patient has problem only with the dentition maxillary and mandibular dentition and does not want exposure of the tmj okay or the orbits or the maxillary sinus region then you need to expose only the dental tissues to radiation suppose it's a fracture case and there are skull injuries in the patient orbital injuries skull injuries tmj is fractured then you can go in for a full volume scan this is called as a full volume scan okay and this is small as a small volume fov field of view okay so beam beam limitation is an advantage you get with cbct so smaller the size of beam lesser the amount of radiation which is required to the patient 
So maybe you can expose the patient to radiation for just the TMJ. Or maybe you can expose the patient like here. You can expose just for the TMJ region. Or you can just expose the maxilla with the sinus sparing the mandible. Okay. So that advantage you get. And smaller the size of the field of view, FOV, lesser the amount of radiation you are giving the patient. So it has an advantage even for children where you want to give them less radiation. There you have a maximum advantage using this field of view application of CBCT. Yes, now let's come to a very important part, which I think, you know, most of you would be interested in knowing is the fact that what is the applications in clinical dentistry, where all I can use CBCT. I'm sure, uh, you know, most of you would be exposed to this technology now. Most of you would know where this technology is being used. Okay. And you would be subscribing for CBCT also. But let me do some knowledge addition to what you already know, perhaps. One very important application, which I consider is one of the primary important applications, is that in endodontics. In endodontics, its application is mandatory for all the three stages of root canal planning, whether it's preoperative assessment, intraoperative, or postoperative. In all the three stages of root canal treatment, you will require a CBCT as and when. Okay. And this has been also echoed by the joint position statement, which has been released. Okay. In 2014. And now there's a revised version, which is coming up here in 2021, which the American Association of Endodontics, along with the American Academy of Oral Maxillofacial Radiology, both of them together have laid down certain basic principles of application of CBCT, okay? So, where all you can use CBCT and it has been revised periodically. Every time this technology is growing in popularity, more and more applications are being revealed, okay? So, it's being revised from time to time, but all, all aspects of endodontic diagnosis and treatment planning, okay, can very well be done using this CBCT technology. Let me quote this small example for you. This is an example of um, a patient of a very um, good friend of mine. You know, uh, he was doing uh, a treatment in this patient, okay, who came to him with a complaint of severe pain in this tooth. Okay, he had severe pain in this lower lateral incisor. And he didn't know what could be the cause because every time he took a radiograph, all that he could get is a small shadow like this, a very small shadow and didn't know because he could see the pulp behind, the tooth seemed to be sound, there was no fracture in the root. So every time he took a radiograph, he didn't know what was the cause. Okay, then he sent it to me for a CBCT scan and we could determine this external resorption. Just look at the extent of this resorption. Okay. And this correlated with the deep pocket that the patient was having in this region. Okay, seven millimeters deep pocket was there in the patient. All right. And then it was so easy for him to not just determine its location, but determine its size. Okay, what approach he's going to do for its treatment, how much he needs to open up and how he's going to seal that region. So if you could see very clearly this entire tooth underwent a root canal therapy and here you could see the vertical length okay, being determined. He has negotiated the pulp canal and he has sealed it with MTA. Okay, And this region has been completely sealed now. So had there not been a 3D imaging, see from how many angles he could get the information. Okay, The coronal, the sagittal, okay, the axial, so multiple angles he could get the entire information and then go about the treatment of this tooth completely. So now the tooth where you have a very big question mark of what could be the pathology, you know, assuming that what it is, now you have a definitive diagnosis at your hand. Not just the diagnosis, you have the measurement, you have the site, and you can take your call as far as the treatment plan is concerned. 
and very easy for you to explain to the patient also showing the images. So the patient also gets convinced looking at the radiographs. Okay. This is another case, very interesting case of, okay, treatment done in this premolar. All right. But while it is being treated, there was an acute pain which developed on the third day. And the doctor didn't know why, what could be the cause for acute pain in this premolar. He sent it for a scan and we realized that while he was, he had just began the treatment of this tooth, okay, we realized that it is hopeless. There is no point in going ahead with the treatment because the tooth had fractured. Can you look at this? Okay. It had fractured and it had resulted in a large periapical radiolucency. Maybe this radiolucency is because of the decay or because of the caries. Okay. But the fracture in the isthmus region, in the furcation area, and the bone loss, proximal bone loss in the furcation area. Okay. The bone loss, even on the lingual side, puts this tooth in the category of an endoperio lesion with the tooth. And when it's an endoperio lesion with a vertical fracture, it has a very poor prognosis. All right. So you could see again axial, coronal, and sagittal in one single plane. Okay. In one single monitor screen, you can see that you can see the tooth in all three dimensions. So that, okay, advantage you get with CBCT, you instantly are able to reach to a diagnosis and determine the treatment plan. Similarly, with this tooth as well, you could see the periapical radiolucency here. Look at that. Okay. Where is a lingual perforation. The same tooth here, you could see the vertical fracture and see that it had undergone multiple changes which strengthened the diagnosis and the treatment plan that perhaps this tooth needs extraction and no further treatment. Okay. Then another important application. Now, what I would uh, really like to stress upon here is the fact that when you have a case like this, please remember that such minute fractures never can be diagnosed on IOPS using conventional radiographs mm -hmm. because this whole root, whole surface, it casts a shadow, it casts an image because of superimposition of the buccal and the palatal roots. Okay, this thin radiolucency gets completely masked get completely hidden and you cannot detect it at all. Okay. Similarly, when you see your, look at this case where I could see that there was a bridge in this patient and the patient had acute pain below the bridge. Didn't know what was the reason. The tooth is root canal treated. Everything is fine, but there's acute pain below the bridge. So I asked the doctor to send it for a scan before removing the bridge. I said, let me reach to a diagnosis first. Let me see what's wrong. And to my surprise, something which I could, couldn't see on this IOPA. Okay, I couldn't see on the IOPA. We could catch on the CPCT is the fact that there was a vertical, thin, linear fracture. A vertical, oblique fracture with this pivola. Just look at this. Such oblique fractures which are so very thin, hair-like, okay? This hair-like fractures, very thin fractures going obliquely cannot be detected on IOPS at all. That's why you missed it out here. But one important, one important point or take away point I'd like to give you here is whenever you have a lateral radiolucency developing, lateral radiolucency along one surface of the root only, where the tooth is not periodontally compromised, please remember that there, there are very high chances that there is a fracture involved. Okay. So I'm pointing at this arrow where it is pointing those lateral radiolucency, unlike this, which has got a circumscribed radiolucency around the tooth. But here you have a lateral radiolucency, okay, which is around just one segment of the tooth, the mesial segment. And that, when I focused that area, I could see an oblique fracture. And that was the reason why this patient had acute pain with this premolar, which was not at all detected on the IOPA. 
okay so wherever iopf fails cbct succeeds where two dimensional radiographs fail three dimensional imaging succeeds okay and that is one advantage we are today getting with cbct and we should all feel very proud of this technology which is serving to almost all clinical branches today of dentistry all clinical branches are depending upon this one imaging modality to reach to their diagnosis i'll show you some more cases further like you have an endodontic evaluation let me tell you now that most of the endodontic books are being rewritten because they are detecting more and more canals now with cbct which were initially not detected using conventional radiographs so whatever conventional radiograph showed like for this tooth what can you infer from a conventional radiograph what can you see nothing major but when we do a cbct scan i can see that including the mesiobuccal and mesiolingual there is a mid mesial small mid mesial canal okay which lies equidistant on the buccal and the lingual side equidistant so it is called as mid mesial canal okay with the second molar it's very very common this mid mesial canal and this mid mesial canal was basically the reason why okay a cbct was needed in this case otherwise this canal would have completely being missed and in the indian scenario its prevalence is almost close to 28% so that is the reason these canals these uh, 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 sorry accessory canals cannot be missed okay otherwise it will result in a root canal failure in the patient it has to be detected it has to be diagnosed so two ways of diagnosing these extra canals are either using microscopes in the clinics but many of the doctors or practitioners don't have a microscope so they can use or make use of cbct to determine the root canal morphology then many c shaped canals like the lower second molar again a changed morphology is a c shaped canal whose percentage is close to 30% in the asian population okay and it cannot be detected on conventional radiograph cannot be detected highly challenged case of a c shaped canal which has to be determined before so the doctor is prepared to change the process of obturation for such teeth okay and it cannot be detected by any other method other than cbct yes then another important aspect is the fact that the thickness of the volume okay always remember that for cbct we use something known as a small volume we use a small volume small fov smaller the size of the field of view better the resolution like you see you have a 10 mm resolution here and a 0.076 mm resolution now please appreciate the resolution see here and see how faded it is in this radiograph because thicker the volume lesser the resolution lesser the sharpness smaller the volume okay smaller the scan size so whenever you want to scan a single tooth you can expect images of the highest quality because with small area scan you are going to reduce the field of view when you are going to reduce the field of view you are going to get better resolution okay so you you have a radio lucency at 0.076 at 2 mm also it is appreciable at 5 mm it is very non relevant whereas it is very very relevant when you look at 0.076 mm so always diagnosis and your reporting should be done when you are cutting the volume to 0.076 or for that matter even to about 2 mm if you can cut you can equally see the pathology very clearly then when you have for third molar disimpactions okay from endo now i'm coming to oral surgery what is its application i'm sure many of you would have prescribed for a cbct scan when you see that there is a okay the literature also says that 
whenever you have a deep third molar impaction where the roots are either curved or in close approximation to the inferior alveolar nerve canal you must use a cbct like you can see in this case okay you can see that both the third molars are not just horizontally impacted but they have curved roots okay like a hockey stick shape okay on one side now when i take a cbct scan can you imagine the proximity of the third molar to the inferior alveolar nerve canal just look at its approximation there is no way that you could remove this tooth without slight maybe touch or damage to the inferior alveolar nerve but if you take the scan beforehand and if you see this close approximation you can make basic changes in your treatment protocol in sectioning the tooth taking out the roots one by one you can do some sort of a treatment plan changes when you know and you can most importantly inform the patient beforehand that look you may develop numbness after the disinfection process but it will heal in certain days because i'm going to take all the precautions while i'm taking out the tooth so if you're ready with the right procedure the patient is also equally calm because he knows that he's in the right hands so please don't shy away from prescribing for your patient for a cbct scan whenever you see a deep third molar disinfection i don't say that this is required for every third molar impaction no something which is superficial having straight roots not in close approximation to the inferior alveolar nerve canal you can just take an iop or an opg and go ahead but when you see a deep impaction similarly goes even for endo whenever you see a complicated root canal you can advise a cbct so be very selective when you are using cbct don't be very rational irrational in using this technology every patient should be sent for a cbct no not required as and when it is required okay like one more case there was an eruption sequestrum here eruption sequestrum which was blocking the eruption of this third molar not just that this third molar had almost perforated the lower border can you imagine how thick the lower border of the mandible is how thick the bone is in spite of that this little tooth here had perforated the lower border of the mandible because there was an eruption sequestrum here radio opacity you can see which was lying above it which was pushing the tooth down not allowing it to erupt and to my surprise i could see that in between the two roots in between the mesial and the distal root i could see the inferior alveolar nerve canal progressing further so between the two roots it was located so i had to take all the precautions while taking out this tooth and i had to section it and take it out one by one so that protocol you will only follow if you have a scan in your hand so reliability of cbct and other radiographic methods for third molars it is said that cbct examination for pre operative radiographic evaluation of complicated impacted lower third molars only complicated impacted third molars which you feel that you're going to have a complication you can do using cbct another important case this is an opg of again another young boy okay another young boy who came to us with severe pain severe pain in the jaw madam i don't know where is the pain but this whole area was painful he didn't know and uh, opg i also could not say too much so whenever there is unexplained pain of unknown origin okay all that history he had is that i ate something hard i ate something hard and after that i had this acute pain but to my surprise what i could see was this fracture can you see this irregular uneven fracture behind the third molar okay behind the third molar so these kind of fractures are generally missed out using opg okay this is the fracture site and a very clear cut fracture which was located again it was an oblique fracture so there is no way that you could see on a conventional radiograph this kind of a fracture it is not displaced but it is not healed as well
okay this was a fracture site one was the buccal fracture one was the lingual so that why you can see two separate lines one is buccal and one is lingual both are you know lying close to each other so its plane of fracture is different and the third molar is lying in the line of the fracture the another important application which i i, I find very very interesting which i could never see with ct scan is the fact of maxillary sinusitis okay maxillary sinusitis occurring because of very very common maxillary teeth infection whenever there is maxillary premolar and molar infection then the infection gets drained into the sinus on the same side okay like for example this is the culprit tooth here and here you could see that because of this tooth there is complete filling of the sinus just look at this and look at the sinus the sinus is completely empty but this sinus is completely full on the left hand side okay the whole sinus right from superior to inferior border has been filled up with mucosal thickening okay so complete opacification of the sinus on one side because of dental infection which are progressing and many of the dentists don't bother to attend to this tooth and rather keep sending the patient to an ENT specialist so that is how we lose our patients so please be aware that whenever there is unilateral maxillary sinusitis it is most common due to it's most common due to maxillary dental infections then we have siloliths just look at this okay soft tissue calcifications whenever there are soft tissue calcifications you cannot detect it on 2d radiographs because of this ramus superimposition opg is generally will give you a small shadow and sometimes the small shadow gets hidden in the bone it is not visible at all but on a cbct you just can't determine its location how much at the distance it is from the mandible you can determine its size that it is 7 by 5 mm size there are not one stone but there are two stones one mesial and one distal and its location that is just below the third molar so whenever you have any doubt of where to open up in the floor of the mouth you know now exactly where to open up okay you can palpate that region just behind the third molar and open that area all right so silolith is another important application of cbct then its application in so i just look at this my dear pgs friends colleagues that it's it's got wide applications wide applications al along multiple uh, spheres of dentistry okay be it endodontics be it oral surgery be it uh, you know sinus evaluation be it even for third molar disimpaction and here you have for tmj okay now in tmj there is one limitation though there is one limitation is that you can only see the bony changes you cannot see the soft tissue changes whenever you have the the disc interposition between the two bony components you fail to see the disc on a cbct scan you can only see the bony area but still a lot of information can be derived from the bony area like in this case you can see that there was a bifid condyle there was a bifid condyle and there was a retarded growth of the ramus okay so bifid condyle easily detectable on cbct now this bifid condyle had not just shortened the length of the mandible just look at this the length of the mandible the angle also had increased the angle also had increased okay because of this morphological change and this is a severe case of osteoarthritis known as pencil head shift a pencil head shaped condylar change seen in patients with osteoarthritis of tmj And then here you could see ankylosis tmj ankylosis huge bony chunk okay which is deposited so for oral surgery an image like this is a bone how much bone to cut where to cut okay what sort of a drill to use how much deep to go all this information can be derived based upon this image quality all right then 
one of the kings of application the most primary important application is the fact of implant imaging okay implant imaging just look at this where cbct is a golden standard in implant imaging and not just these textbooks but number of textbooks today are saying that the golden standard for implant imaging is a cbct okay and there was a joint position paper which was again taken out which has again been revised recently this was way back in 2012 but again we have now in 2021 i think feb 2021 it is still not out it is still not out online they're just giving a small abstract but still remember that there are joint position papers which have been taken out between the implantology society and maxillofacial radiology okay who emphasize that cbct should be used for implant imaging why cbct because whenever there are any morphological changes in the bone look at this this is a young young boy young boy who is 24 years of age who accidentally had his tooth removed because of a road traffic accident and he wanted an implant and just imagine the bone quality it is a dumbbell shaped bone look at the compression in the middle one third where is the space for the implant okay so such morphologies of the bone have to be recognized before hand only before you perforate the bone during osteotomy so these are some important morphological changes of the bone lingual depressions which you see okay unusual bone morphologies which you see on cbct then when you want to determine the length and the height like in this case okay height of the bone just look at this height of the bone then the bucolingual width of the bone contour of the bone the entire contour whether it is knife edge or bulbi okay so whenever there is contour of the bone and density what is a type of bone okay that in which you are going to place an implant and of course when you want to see important anatomical structures like intraalveolar nerve canal all this information height width intraalveolar nerve canal this entire information can be obtained on a cbct just look at this image okay here you can determine the entire height okay that it is 22 mm it's the width of the bone all right and the density this is a beautiful bone having more cortical component and less medullary component okay more cortical cortical and less medullary component it lies in the d2 variety if you see the bish classification it comes in the d2 variety of bone or maybe even d1 variety of bone there there is plenty of bone in terms of its density but the the bone is quite narrow it is only about 6 mm wide or 7 mm wide so one has to be very very careful in selecting the implant and determining the depth okay yes so in all aspects the cbct ranks higher as compared to a uh, opg okay panoramic radiograph as compared to that cbct ranks high in every sector in every sector whether it is height evaluation width evaluation length evaluation okay anatomical location bone quality all this information you see that opg fails but cbct succeeds to a great extent in giving you all the relevant relevant information of the area of interest then another important application okay i'm not going to elaborate too much on this because orthodontic application in itself is a separate lecture so i'm just going to touch this one slide and leave it here today there cbct is you know an important aspect where we determine all aspects of bone pathologies okay in terms of you know the tooth location the location of the tooth the location of okay maybe if it's if it's a it's a mixed dentition okay and there has to be an evaluation of the inclination of the tooth that it's going to take its position in the jaw so all that evaluation can be done using cbct okay various softwares are available on demand software is available in automaj software so various softwares are available which have you know specific application for 
something like orthodontics dolphin is a very good software so there are various softwares which can be used today and all relevant information and measurements for impacted third molars impacted canines okay or positioning of the teeth can be taken out using cbct so i think with with this we are almost okay uh, nearing the end of the lecture but <clears throat> at this time i'd like to emphasize some important aspects that <clears throat> this technology is here to stay it's here to stay for a very long time uh, students who have not been exposed to this technology should get their experience in this field because with time the 2d imaging okay is going to reduce in popularity of course it is it is going to remain because a common indian person cannot afford a cbct all the time so opg is always going to be there but cbct is going to speed up in its application process okay its applications are just increasing day by day and one single record if a patient has and he maintains the cv he can use that record multiple times to do multiple treatment plans okay so that one advantage a person gets with cbct that you can do a scan once and use that cd maybe at multiple dentists or multiple specialties where you want to get treatments done and you don't have to get the scan done all the time so that one advantage you get with cbct yes now i'd also like to emphasize that yes at this point let me also help you with um, you know uh, telling you that uh you know we conduct online courses for students who are interested in knowing more about this technology you can contact with us i'll i'll share my contact details if you want more information of how to use this imaging technology where to use it if you have any uh, specific uh, you know purpose of knowing its application like in endodontics or specifically in orthodontics then regular courses we one we are planning to take in the month of february now so if anybody is interested you can always get back in touch with us and you can see more of uh, you know our information not just related to imaging but also related to the oral cavity and the oral medicine aspect of dentistry in our youtube channel called as mouth matters you can go through this channel we are putting in a lot of uh, information regarding oral ulcers here i'm just sharing this slide with you and i think with this we complete the lecture and this is the email id and the contact details if anybody would be interested in knowing more about this technology thank you thank you dr arti it was a wonderful and excellent informative <laughs> lecture and uh, hope all the delegates who are there and faculty members must be benefited about this yes, and, uh, any questions from anyone any questions from anyone you can uh, raise hand and you can straight away can ask question to the speaker good afternoon good afternoon sir good afternoon yeah. ma'am good afternoon uh, uh ma'am my sister dr arpan manna uh, i just want to ask one question that uh, as a clinician can we diagnose the bone quality through cbct properly uh dr arpan that's a very good question see bone quality in terms i mean uh, for what i can understand you mean the bone density right yes ma'am yes bone density can be uh, determined not in terms of hounsfield value okay you can't determine hounsfield value of the bone density like you can do on ct scan because it's a volumetric scan but yes when you have a look very close look at the uh the bone architecture because we are dealing with very small area of maxilla or mandible so if you see the cortical outline okay or if you see the amount of medullary bone whether the medullary bone is you know spaced too much okay it is a sparse bone or it is a dense bone you know cortical outline is thin or it is a thick cortical outline so based upon that information you can determine that whether the density of the bone in which the osteotomy is going to be done is a good bone or it's a poor quality bone okay so that information definitely can be drawn from a cbct scan all that you require is a very good scan having a good resolution and area of interest you need to focus very nicely if you focus on the area of interest very nicely then 
you can determine the density of the bone. Okay, and Mish, if you have read this book uh, of uh, implant logy by Mish, okay, he determines, he gives a very good architectural reference for bone density using CBCT. Okay, how will a dense bone look? How will a sparse bone look? So he's categorized bone as D1, D2, D3, and D4 based upon its appearance on a CBCT. Thank you so much, well, ma'am. Welcome, Dr. Arfan. Yeah. Uh, anyone else? Sir, I would like to ask. Yeah. Yes, Dr. Larry. Yeah. Good afternoon. I think she's muted. Yeah, 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 Larry. You can start. You can ask question. No problem. Yeah, yeah. And how do we decide uh, what parameters should be for segmenting the image? How do we go for segmentation of the image? I can't hear her question very clearly. Can anybody just uh, clarify? Can you repeat Larry, the question, you... Larry? Can you repeat the question, Larry? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, sir, I wanted to ask that when we get a patient's image at the, after initial scanning, how do we decide what are the parameters we should keep in mind before going for segmentation of the image? I've still not got it. <laughs> <laughs> Larry, I think you just come over here. I think, yeah. Yeah. Meanwhile, any other, any other, anybody having any queries? You can unmute yourself and you can try to ask question. Yes. Yeah. That was a question. Question. Yeah, you can speak from here. No? Yeah. Am I audible? Yes, yes, you are. Ma'am, I wanted to ask that uh, after we get the basis image, at uh, initially after the scan, how do we decide what parameters to keep in mind before going for segmentation of the image? Uh, Dr. Larry, uh, we don't have to use too much of our knowledge there okay. because this whole process is done automatically. Okay. okay, no parameters. You, you needn't set any parameters for reconstruction. The computer, the server computer does, does it on its own. Okay. okay, all that you need to keep in mind is the scanning area, the field of view that you want to scan. Once you have chosen the field of view, okay, all the other parameters are set by the CBCT machine itself. Okay. Okay, so okay. once the scanning is, yeah, once the scanning is done, the whole digital raw data, we call it as a raw data, it is transferred onto the computer, the server computer. Okay, and the, I showed you an algorithm, right? Yes, yes. Yes, that algorithm, by using that algorithm, the calculations are done automatically and you can see the image directly on the screen. Okay, ma'am. Thank you so okay. much. Yeah. Ma'am, I had another question uh, regarding bifid condyle. So, yes. what are the characteristic features that we can see on CBCT in a bifid condyle when we compare it to OPG? When you compare it to OPG, see a bifid condyle will appear much smaller in size as compared to a, a regular condyle. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, the condyle gets split in the center. Yes, so, you if, if you were going to see it on an OPG, you can see something like uh, the uh, a hypoplastic condyle. You can see a very small condyle on an OPG. Mm -hmm. Because maybe the bifid component is hiding behind. And you mm -hmm. may not be able to see it on a 2D x-ray. Okay. So, clinically, you may see that the patient has slightly shifted mandible. He's got slight deviation of the jaw. Okay. okay. One side of the face may appear a little smaller, a micrognathic mandible unilaterally. Slight, okay. you, yeah, slight uh, shortening of the ramus, shortening of the height of, you know, your condylar neck, all that would be visible clinically. And radiographically, you will just see a small hypoplastic condyle. But when you take a CBCT scan, you will realize that it is not a hypoplastic condyle, but it is actually a bifid condyle. Okay. okay? So this bifid condyle in itself is just an anatomical variation. If the patient is okay with it, it requires no major treatment. Okay. Okay. But sometimes it does create TMJ pains. Okay. 
in the patient it creates because the disc is only one although the condyles are two but there is only one disc isn't it yeah so one part of the condyle is touching the glenoid fossa directly okay so there could be arthritis sort of you know issues with a patient he could develop pmj pain and many of the bifid condyles you know are diagnosed accidentally because the patients come to us with tmj pains hmm. yes ma'am you no know? yeah, yeah they come with tmj pains to us and only when we uh, you know examine clinically uh, note down all the clinical features then go about taking the radiograph and then the cbct we realize that it is actually a bifid condyle so either you can explain to the patient and make him relaxed if he is wanting a surgical correction then it may be needed sometimes yeah thank you so much ma'am most welcome yeah thank you uh, anyone else anyone else have any questions any queries good afternoon ma'am yeah good afternoon good anushka. afternoon dr anushka uh ma'am i just wanted to ask uh, what are the disadva- uh, what are the advantages of uh, cbct over a ct scan advantages okay. yes ma'am i think i just covered it in the presentation anushka but, uh, but do you have anything specific in mind while asking this question or generally you are asking me no no ma'am in relation to uh, the diagnosis of oral examination or oral cavity what exactly are the advantages of cbct because it is also a three dimensional scan ct is also a uh, three dimensional scan so why matlab uh, why do we prefer cbct as over a ct scan anushka uh, uh, see let me tell you that uh, when the ct scan machine came okay uh, when the ct came it basically came in for medical application okay it it came in for application in the medical field um, they struggled to put in a software for the dental application okay which i, I just showed you uh, known as a denta scan that okay let us even scan the head and neck area uh, for the dental application i hope uh, my uh, there is no noise in my background no ma'am yes ma'am yes ma'am okay. no 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 yeah so this they gave something known as a denta scan okay with the denta scan software we can use it in head and neck region all right but it came in with a lot of disadvantages for us disadvantages in aspect that number one we were exposing the patient to too much of radiation in the head and neck which was not needed okay which was not needed because the jaws for say maxilla and mandible is 90% bone and 10% soft tissue okay your gingiva is a very small part of it's it's basically the bone and the dental tissues which which sums up the entire dental hard tissues is it it so we required an imaging modality which could reduce the radiation dose to the patient which could give us dimensionally more accurate images more sharpened images okay which a dental scan was not doing all right and at the same time um, every patient if you advise for a ct scan for the head and neck all right you are exposing him to almost you know 10 times the radiation 10 times more radiation diagnostic value is lost for implant analysis you cannot do any measurements of the bone you cannot determine any information of the pulp chamber or the pulp canal okay so multiple disadvantages of a ct scan as compared to cbct but yes one aspect where ct ranks higher is soft tissue resolution we don't get soft tissue information on cbct and that's why application of cbct does not work well for cancers oral cancers okay in oral cancers we need to see how much of soft tissue involvement is there suppose there is malignancy of the alveolus along with the cheek mucosa so we cannot determine how much of infiltration it has taken place into the lymph nodes into the cheek mucosa all that information cannot be drawn with a cbct okay so soft tissue resolution we don't get on cbct but in all the other aspects of diagnosis okay including the uh, radiation dose and including the cost cbct is much superior as compared to ct scan So, okay thank you so much ma'am welcome anushka thank you anyone else anybody any queries 
they can unmute themselves and they can uh, ask questions. Yeah, I think uh, that's a wonderful lecture once again, Dr. Arti, and thank you for your uh, support and you, you have spared a lot of time for us and uh, explained about the various clinical applications, particularly about the various fields and you are shown of the many good cases also. I think definitely all the faculty and the students might be benefited about such cases and their importance in the various specialities. Thank you so much. Thank you once again. And thank you. Uh, I thank my faculty members and by students who helped me in arranging this and the technical team also in arranging such a, a successful online CD program. Thank you so much. I once again, thank you from the uh, department as well as our uh, Tirthanka family. I thank you for your support and you have been spared time and accepted my invitation and to be a uh, speaker for this program. Thank you so thank much. Thank you, Sunil. Thank, thank you, thank you. It was a pleasure, in fact. Yeah. Yeah. It was a pleasure meeting you online and meeting yeah, yeah. my... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Meeting all the students and faculty yeah, yeah. members of Tirthanka yeah, yeah. Dental College. Yeah, if anybody has any query and want to know more about this technology, they can always get back in uh, touch anytime. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sunil. Thank you, Dr. Sunil. Thank, thank you so much. I thank you all once again, all the faculty members and the students for supporting me. Thank you so much. Thank you.